we identify the, the genes that are responsible for a disease, and we are able to identify genes that other methods cannot see. And, um, you know, that enables us to, you know, to look at the proteins that these genes code for, and then we could, we could find drug targets among those. If you had to talk to your grandmom or you had to talk to a kid and you want to explain what uh, biotech's AI does today, it works in the field of genomics, but what it is that it does in a nutshell. All right. So I, I just mentioned the, the Human Genome Project and, you know, if the Human Genome Project had been 100% successful, then now we would have been able to cure all the diseases in the world. But this, of course, hasn't happened. There are some diseases that we were able to cure through it, but others not. And the reason for that is that uh, genetic and genomic data is simply incredibly complex to analyze because it is, it is not big data, but it is wide data. The difference is simply in big data, you are learning something really simple and you have millions of examples to learn it. Whereas with wide data, you're learning something incredibly complex and you only have very few examples to learn from. So the thing here, the, a good example for big data would be Twitter data. You have billions of tweets. Each tweet only has about 20 words. Whereas in genomic data, the human genome consists of over 4 million genetic variants that are captured in the modern biochips. But then the, the number of patients you have in each study is um, only a few thousands, and in cases of rare diseases, only a few hundred. That's where biotech's AI comes into play. We are able to make sense of such data and have you know, developed workarounds to, to tackle that data. Can you give us uh, a sense of uh, what it means uh, with, with a tangible example? So what is the, the input and the output of you know, a project where biotech's AI uh, makes a difference? The general premise of biostatistics, comparing the DNA of a sick cohort and a healthy cohort, and then use that to find the differences that determine whether somebody is sick or not. With the standard approaches, you have huge trouble. You only identify certain uh, single gene variants, but in reality, really, um, Many, many diseases are polygenic in nature, meaning that there are, you know, complex patterns, complex genetic patterns that cause the disease. And our machine learning algorithms are able to identify these more complex patterns. So then that gives us, first of all, a way to predict who's going to get the disease and who won't get it very accurately. But second also, imagine we have these different gene variants that you know, cause a disease or are associated with the disease or correlated with it, then you can also look at the proteins because every uh, a gene variant lies on a gene and a gene in turn codes for a protein. So then you can look at the whole problem in the protein level and then you see the metabolic pathways that affect the disease. And then, you know, you also see potentials for drug targets because in those pathways there will be receptors, there will be, will be drug targets. And then you can make your way towards a drug target. We identify the, the genes that are responsible for a disease, and we are able to identify genes that other methods cannot see. And, um, you know, that enables us to, you know, to look at the proteins that these genes code for, and then we could, we could find drug targets among those, and we, and we have. Um, you know, then, yes, you could say if, if there is not a molecule that exists, then you would have to you know, go to a company, for example, that, that works in, in, these, in designing drug candidates. But um, the nice thing is also that, you know, there are already um, a myriad of compounds existing in this world. And, you know, we have a database on all that. So what we are trying to do at, at first really is to see, is there an existing drug or existing drug candidate that was maybe used for uh, another indication or you know, was never really, was never released because it didn't work for the, for the original indication. And we, we look if, you know, if something like that already exists. And, you know, that makes the whole process a lot easier because then we suddenly have a drug that already exists. We have established that this drug, well, we, we already know that that drug affects the drug target. And what we have established is that the new drug, that the drug target um, is actually connected to the new disease. So you could skip all the, the preclinical testing and you could simplified, um, saying this simplified now, go right into a clinical phase 2B. So that is, that is drug repurposing, which is very, very attractive to companies like us who are, who are smaller.